Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and today we are going to start our Boeing 737 NG cockpit preparation series and today we are in cold and dark cockpit and in Prague airport actually and today we are going to do the electrical power up and pre-fly procedure as you can see the cockpit is very dark not so cold I would say it's a summer time but as you can see I installed the ISDO camera on my prepare 3D simulator of Boeing 737 so you can see no lights nothing but I have to disable this ISDO camera so I'll disable it now because I'm unable to zoom zoom in with this ISDO camera so I'll just cancel them disable and We'll do it like in good old times. And then you first come to the airplane, it is like this, so it's better to take a look on what is happening in the cockpit in general. Then you stay in here in the aisle, so if everything is alright, your first look may take some, maybe some rubbish left from the previous group. But anyway, the first step you need to do is electrical power up, then you see. Uh, usually we have the normal checklist over here in the glare shield, it's paper one and from the other side we have electrical power up checklist so you can do it um, by this checklist otherwise you need to search I'll just show it to you um, you have it in flight crew operations manual so you go to supplementary procedures electrical electrical power up so here's the procedure electrical power up and supplementary procedures also you may do it by heart if you're sure if you're not sure just follow your checklist or flight crew operations manual but basically you need to do first step is to select the battery also battery guard and close and as you can see we have some of the lights and battery is working now and you can see it's depleting we have minus 38 amps battery is quite good 24 volts it's okay for the battery later what we do later we check this stand standby power switch it should be guarded and closed don't do it just check it <laughs> Uh, next we go to alternate flaps master switch so it should be off here next we go to wipers they are here so we just check that they are in a park position next we go to electrical hydraulic pumps they are here make sure they are off and next we go to, 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 to landing gear it is down and we have three greens indicated that they are down and locked so basically like this and we can connect the ground power on if it's available as you can see we are staying on the runway <laughs> so there probably is no any ground power available at this moment so there will be no any light over here so that is why we need to start the auxiliary power unit but also I would like to mention that on Boeing 737 Classic you also need to check that your weather radar is off so basically mm, it's quite a strange weather radar we have here well can uh, usually it's not common to have well at least on this version we have it and also we need to set the parking brake let it be but on Boeing 737 in G in supplementary procedures we don't have it anymore so you finish with the landing gear lever and after that you can connect ground power so it's like this external power is needed yes ground power on that's all you need to do um, on Boeing 737 Classic, as I say, as far as I remember, you also need to check the weather radar and set the parking brake. Before starting the auxiliary power unit, you need to perform the fire test. So go to fire panel here and go to faulting up. You have fault, APU detection. Also check your master caution and system initiator here. Eat. So switch it on again. 
So we have two master cautions and overheat detection over here. That's normal. And then perform fire test. So it simulated the engine fire, APU fire. So engine overheat, two lights, red lights, and check the bell and two fire warnings and master cautions. Next, take test your squeeps. One and two. Well, that's all you need to do. And now you may start the auxiliary power unit. It's here, the switch. And you just start it. Check the EGT. There is no specific limits for EGT, EGT in uh, Boeing 737 and G. There are, however, on Boeing 737 Classic. So low over pressure, it's normal for our case. And just check this arrow goes up. Mm -hmm. The starter is fully automatic. Boeing 77. You can see we have better discharge and not so many volts. Before it used to be 24 volts, now it's just 22. Depleted our battery. And we are waiting for this blue light. The same blue light will be here. It means the APU will be APU generator will be available and we can put it on buses. Yes, as you can see, APU gen of bus. And you see this blue light, you can put the generator on. So it is working right now. And to help our APU, we may also put the central fuel pump switch on because we have some fuel in the central tank, as you can see, almost 6 tons. And I put it here, because the APU is located in this section. If you don't have some, uh, fuel in central tank, you can use it, this one. This from the left wing, main fuel tank. But I will put central here. Fine. After you set the APU generator on bus, make sure that those lights over here and over here are extinguished and all the APU related lights are also extinguished over here. And now you just proceed with interior cockpit inspection. Uh, what you basically need to do is you need to pull the bag outside of this jump seat, so it's on the bottom there. And yes guys, it's actually the jump seat. I don't know why Boeing did it, but you can sit here. But there is no any place for your legs will be left over here. So there's the main jump seat here. As you can see. So it's a main jump seat. And here is like auxiliary, <laughs> auxiliary one. So we pull the back out of it with the airplane documents, with airline documents. And uh, just check that they are current. Also I do the security search at the same time so we check all this base here there and for foreign objects i would say so we just perform the security search well at this stage you better to find the aircraft flight maintenance lock ifml where you can find the remaining fuel written by the previous crew from the previous flight so here we have 13.8 tons which may not fit the reality because, for example, the maintenance personnel may have performed the engine run up just before you fly, so they may have burned some of the fuel. And you need to have the particular, the real figures of the fuel. That is why you need IFML. And also, you need to check their, their list to service certificate and the old technical stuff done for this flight like 48 hours check, oil check sometimes, so you need to check all this stuff and also you need to check for minimum equipment list. But let's continue with preliminary per flight procedures. So here we have CDU, actually it's MCDU, here we have IRS system and we need to set those switches to put them to enough position, come on, just check this on the C for both of IRSs and shows a line it is good here we put to heading status and we have we should have the remaining time over here 
Mm -hmm. Maybe we should wait a little bit for it. All right. Anyway, go to index and position here. Airport bar in Prague. LKP air. Set the reference of the airport. Go to the next page, and we have GPS data. Yeah, here we have eight minutes remaining and this align start to flash because it says enter iris position that is what i'm doing <laughs> so for example we'll take gps left this coordinates previous page and set iris position we put it here so this align stop to flash and we have data for our iris system and you can see it already found it has already found the iris position very fast I wonder why you may also use this panel to enter the coordinates so, so in position here it will be like this but I have never used it in my entire life I don't know why but in this simulator we already have uh, the flight instruments and iris position is restored very fast I know why it showed 8 minutes well in real aircraft you have have to wait at least eight minutes or maybe seven minutes the closer you are to equator the less you need to wait the more you are to the north or to the south the more time you need to wait then you are near to the CDU you may check also the engine instruments over here them both here so just check the oil quantity in my airline for example if you are flying from your base from your maintenance main base you have to have at least 75 percent of the oil quantity over here and also you may check the hydraulic quantity it should not be less than 76 uh, percent uh, if you have less than 76 percent the rf symbol will show up you can actually pump the hydraulic quantity from system a to system b and vice versa there is special procedure for that here's the after overhead panel and here you need to check the oxygen pressure uh, here it depends the minimum required oxygen pressure depends on how many persons should be on your flight for depends on your temperature and etc etc so actually in flight crew operations menu you can find uh, the minimum required oxygen pressure for your flight but actually we also have this table over here so we have the paper table on our airplanes that allows uh, for fast check of many required oxygen pressure depends on how many persons are on in the cockpit so here we just check max speed warnings door warnings check everything this slides should be off do not allow to fly like this so they both should be on or off the electronic engine controls here it should be like this for normal operation pass oxygen supply normal service center phone off here is everything is correct and set very nice very nice this normal ELT probably and let's go to the oxygen test here we have the oxygen mask over here for example in captain position so just press it here and check this cross and to press it longer you just press this one first and then hold it for five seconds check this cross for five seconds and check the pressure the oxygen pressure uh, didn't drop for more than 100 PSI over here and you just check it like this this go back to normal and set to 100% I cannot do it so it's already in 100% all right next you check the circuit breakers make sure they're on their places here circuit breakers and circuit breakers on other sides there are some even hidden circuit breakers which you may find even over here <laughs> well i usually check them and also check the emergency equipment that you have emergency escape rope 
that is here for the captain's side you just open and check if there's a rope inside and here the same uh, fire x this is your fire x make sure that you have three pins three gear pins on board usually they're in special box over there check that fire extinguisher bottle is okay the pressure is fire extinguisher not the bottle the fire extinguisher is okay for the pressure uh, find googles find the gloves this door should be closed over here make sure it's not open otherwise you will not be able to retract the landing gear check the pb it's here make sure it's sealed and secure check your life vests which are behind the captain's and first officer's seat check your uh, door the cockpit door i will not show the check procedure the test procedure of the door due to security reasons at this stage usually pilot monitoring performs the walk around and exterior check and the pilot flying stays in the cockpit and performs the cdu pre-flight um, with this cdu so it sets the data required for navigation for aircraft uh, performance for your flight but we will not do it in our video today it will be the topic of our next videos and uh, because otherwise this video will be very very long so we'll just skip CDU pre-flight and we'll perform actual pre-flight procedure for overhead panel and for other systems just to prepare our aircraft for the flight and let's start the pre-flight procedure my friends so we follow the Boeing standard flow from up to down from right to left from left to right and let's start from this uh, flight control panel so standby rudder switches are should be both guarded and secured don't do like <laughs> i did right now just leave leave them in secure position so these lights it's normal for those lights to be on low pressure like this because we don't have the hydraulic system uh, working uh, so these lights should be off and turn and flaps already guarded in off position uh, this switch is spring loaded to off position spoilers this used only for maintenance purpose you definitely should be on here i wonder i think this differential pressure light should be off i just don't know why it's on maybe i should turn on the hydraulic pumps electrical pumps yeah it's extinguished we turn them off again see what happens to that light but do not do like this do not uh, arm do not power the hydraulic system without ground personnel clearance otherwise they may have performed some kind of action for example with the uh, leading edge flaps maybe and you can just jam their hands so make take precautions call out for ground personnel before arming the hydraulic system well now it's off i wonder why maybe it's just a simulator but navigation panel all this uh, transfer switches should be in normal mode and they are display panel source auto control panel normal perfect fuel panel here we have the fuel temperature indicator which is in the main tank number one actually so it's okay for the for these lights to be on make sure those off we have a central pump uh, central we have one of the central pumps working for our APU and for example you can if you don't have the central the fuel in the central tank and you use this one if you have fuel and balance for example you may switch it off switch the crossfit and for example this pump from the other fuel tank so you can you can play with it on the ground no worries now let's check and set the electrical system so here we have a huge panel for electrical system on Boeing 757 so electrical panel we have um, this is different so this is for direct current this part and here is for alternate current so we may check the battery voltage over here it's 26 volts and we may 
check all the transformer rectifiers as you can see very nice the battery discharge light the main light that you need to check that the battery is not discharging and it's not discharging over here it is nice from this side you may check the generators which we don't have because the engines are not running here's the ground power but the only AC source, a turning car source for us is APU generator which we have here so there's a frequency, voltage, amps and that's what you need set those two switches for uh, to on position if we pass it and cabin utility bus uh, what here we have standby power is ok to be extinguished drive are ok to be uh, like this so they should lead check the IDG disconnect uh, are guarded and close gen of bus because we don't have the generators for now APU is working you can see we have some EGT and by the way guys I just forgot that we said the uh, APU generator on we need also to set this position light to steady here it should be steady and before takeoff you just move it to strobe and steady but the parking stand you just put it to steady just forgot about it and here we have what do we have here so we finish with electrical it's quite easy you just check it put those two switches to on and here in the center we have circuit breaker lights which you use basically to check the circuit breaker panels you can set the brightness of the panels on these panels on these lights equipment cooling normal is to light extinguish uh, emergency guarded on should press them guarded on uh, chime only for sometimes you have no smoking size here for fast and bells you may put it to on Vipers, we already checked them. And let's move to window heat. Okay, you place them on. And this should not be on. <laughs> so it should be like this. Uh, wing ITIs we don't need. Engine ITIs we don't need for now. This will live like this. All doors, you can see, they are already closed. Cockpit voice recorder, don't do anything with it. Here's just check altitude and differential should be near to zero. Uh, this is the vertical speed indicator of pressure inside the cockpit. And the air system, air trim air switch on. On some airplanes you should turn it off after your flight. On some airplanes you just leave it constantly on. So here we have selector just to check the pressure in the ducts and uh, not the pressure but the temperature in the ducts and in the compartments. Cool warm switches, packs just set them both to auto and we have APUs working for quite a lot of time. So you can just open the APU bleed. We have dual bleed light, it's normal for it. You see, we have on the left duct is working. We have pressure on the left zone. So, we have pressure in two zones. We need to open this isolation valve. See. So we have two packs operation. It's okay for Boeing 737 NG for classic airplane for Boeing 737 classic. You just leave it in auto, the isolation mode in auto mode and you just select one of the packs ouch, to off and you still have two of the decks pressurized with one pack but on NG you just leave it like this to have both pack operations on the ground here you just set your flight level that you want to fly for example 360 and just check it in uh, auto mode so it's the main out for valve indication so just press it to manual you can operate it manually you can see that we can change 
we can change the position of the valve the indication changes but we we'll, should leave it in auto mode and it opens on the ground the elevation you said the airfield elevation now from this camera I don't see it here uh, for the first time of flight you select to the right igniter for your first flight for the day as for the aircraft lights well during the night time you also need to set the logo lights uh, wing light and will well for your walk around but here is the daytime so we'll select them off here what do we have mode control panel mcp and fis i'll start from this part ouch 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 so here i'll set the for example vr vr say the modes on your uh, pfd nd in this fs control control panel here on mcp you just set who will be you decide who will be the pilot flying and you need to switch the master the flight director for the master side so for example if the first officer's pilot flying you said uh, his or her flight director first if the captain will be pilot flying you just switch him off or her off and now we have captain master on here for us let it be and then next you set the course for your runway let it be runway 31 so we have probably 31 yes i don't i didn't get the exact number the exact course for that runway so i need to check my chips and here i have i have i have just the course of 31 speed well it depends on your cdu preflight so we have calculations done for your actual weight let it be 161 what else your initial climb altitude then you will receive the clearance let it be around 3000 heading should be equal with the runway it seems like okay right now so then we'll finish with cdu preflight we'll have exact number for v2 over here and then we'll be able to press the l mouth enough now we are unable because the cdu preflight wasn't done so we'll do it in next video i'll just save this flight and then we'll do it in next video so f is for for so yeah it was it was all right for vr Mm, so we also need to check the oxygen pressure here lights make sure that those switches are secured oh everything is set over here this is the pressing hydraulic accumulator let me gear down green so we're gonna check it flaps for existing position so flaps lever up and we check them uh, make sure your speed brake down, thrust levers at tidal, reverse closed, and you start levers to cut off, parking brake is set, stop trim switches, both, to, both are in normal position. So, like this. Auto brake, set to RTO for your takeoff always, if it's working. Uh, fuel used you check it if it was used no we have zeros so just press to reset and I think that's it maybe for standby instruments you just check the oh yeah you need to check the uh, QNH your local QNH for example here 2992 or pascals as well well you do it with your fs control panel with this with this selection so so then then we'll go to pedestal pedestal or pedestal uh, my english is not really good my friend sorry about it here just check the fire extinguisher system and the cargo compartments uh, so we just simulate the fire you check the scripts and that's all that you need to now check the weather ready is off uh, set the active frequency for delivery 
to obtain the ATC clearance later on. Um, here set the nav data for your departure, uh, for expected departure. Uh, so maybe VR, your initial turn VR, if you don't have everything, if you don't have VR DMEs, just set the ILS frequency for come back just in case. Here, well, I don't know what is this, Collins, Collins, Flight Dynamics, we don't have this stuff installed on our airplane, so we have just a standard transponder, similar to this one, it's like in the Boeing 737 Classic, and also in GA, you can set the squawk, any squawk given to you with the HC clearance, later on here, several modes, basically you just leave it in standby for now here is the comb panels you need to set it to boom you use mask only in case of emergency and then you use the oxygen masks here is the spring loaded switch just go for the tower you may call it with RT or intercom you just call it to your colleague it's normal make sure that it's normal Here's other stations, other stations, ADFs. Well, if you have ADFs on your departure, you may set them. So, go HF frequency, check the rudder. You may also check the rudder, the move, the ailerons. Yeah, and the rudder over here. It's interesting then you move the ailerons, your control wheel, your yoke will also move, so we'll just hold it and you see what happened to control call. You see, you have some kind of roll. So then I move it back, it will be restored. Yep, and we have the scale of the trim, it's over here. Interesting for Boeing 737. So it's the flight deck door. I will not show the operation for the security reasons. Stop train in normal. Well, everything is okay. Here's are the switches for the light for fluid light. As you can see, it's getting brighter, and for panel lights. Very easy very very easy my friends so i think my friends we are ready to see you per flight uh, to perform see you per flight then we'll receive the clearance and we'll calculate our performance and we'll set here the v2 and here initial climb altitude here also using a fist control we'll set the ifra uh, so we set on a minimum here the the engine out altitude for example let it be 1317 so you just check it out it's just a reminder for you what altitude what altitude you need to accelerate if you have engine failure uh, if you look at this mode control panel it's look like on a looks like on a Boeing 737 classic on the modern airplanes we have these panels so maybe I'll just leave it like here so it's a modern style uh, mode control panel so you see those buttons are quite different to the standard similar to classic aircraft MCP it's a quite big difference here and here but the functionality is uh, the same so the buttons are, are the same, so here we have spin introversion, also really nothing nothing special. The standby instruments may also differ, depends on modification, so here we have this uh, classic variant, and here we have this variant, and different variants. Well, mostly on our airplanes we have this, so integrated uh, standby flight display and uh, we have this air mic case still available. So my friends, we did quite a lot of job today. We almost prepared this airplane for engine start. And then next videos of mine you can expect the CDU pre-flight procedure, 
the ATC clearance, the performance calculation, the departure briefing, the engine start itself, taxi takeoff, so on, so on. So we're gonna fly from Prague maybe to Kiev. So we'll make a whole flight series with the short videos. And also, my friends, and it's very important, do not use this video for your real flying the Boeing 737 aircraft. Even though I'm Boeing 737 captain, I made this video just for the joy purpose. So I didn't follow even our airline regulations uh, filming this video because otherwise I will have to explain to you ours. So you see, it's just a pre-flight procedure. See how much this the this just a pre-flight. So otherwise, if I would follow step by step, of if I would explain you every bulb, every switch this video would be i think two hours long so my friends if you want to fly the pmdg simulator like i do or you have zebu simulator on x-plane this video will be okay for you but if you want to fly a real boeing 737 please follow boeing's manual and follow your airline operating procedures i hope you still like this video thank you very much for watching it i know you're awesome guys so you need to follow awesome guy checklist first like this video then subscribe to my channel then ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time